Guys, have you ever had hormonal acne but don't know what to do? Hi, my name's Daphne, dermatologist. Let's fix it. So today we're talking about a medication known as spironolactone. Spironolactone has been with us for many decades. It was first started as a blood pressure medication called a potassium sparing diuretic. From there, dermatologists have figured out it can actually work very well for acne, especially hormonal acne, hair loss, in oily skin. So let's get into it. Spironolactone, um, like I said, works by actually decreasing the amount of oil production that you have in your sebaceous glands. So when you decrease the amount of oil, it is an anti-androgen. So basically you have androgens, which are basically male hormones binding to receptors. And when they bind to receptors, they cause more oil. And when you get more oil, you get more breakouts, and you get more acne, especially hormonal acne. So if you're new to this channel, you know that I go through a few things that are absolutely basic, but also very worthwhile for you um, listeners. What we do with hormonal acne is that we want to regulate your oil production, but do it in a safe manner. So spironolactone works well. Generally speaking, your dermatologist will start you between 50 to 100 milligrams. In exceptional cases, they may increase it to 200 milligrams. So what are the expected results from taking spironolactone? In the context of acne, you can expect a decrease in oily skin, especially around your T-zone area. Breakouts, however, do take some time before they settle down. So cysts, papules, pustules, all of this will settle down within two to three months. So give it some time. Your dermatologist may increase your medication if you're not getting results within six to eight weeks. So you can combine spironolactone taken orally, that's in the tablet or capsule, with other acne treatments. So for example, LED lights, chemical peels such as BHA, beta hydroxy acids. You can use that with your own skincare routine. First, for example, your beta hydroxy acids, or even your retinol retinoids together with azelaic acid. Because it's taken orally, there is no complications with using other medications. In really severe cases, your dermatologist may prescribe spironolactone together with other drugs like Accutane or the oral contraceptive pill, which contains medications such as drospirinone or cyproterone acetate. So this is very customizable according to your lifestyle, your control of your acne, and basically how fast you want it to be treated. Now with spironolactone, most of the time, they will continue you on this for several years. This can actually keep you over that hump of acne and into having clearer skin. So we talk about acne, what else can it do? It is very good for female pattern hair loss. So female pattern hair loss may occur as a genetic disorder, but it may occur with a constellation of symptoms, for example, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So with PCOS, you get skin changes, including excess oil, hair loss, excessive hair in certain areas called hirsutism, together with dreaded acne. So with hair loss, your dermatologist may prescribe you between 50 to 150 milligrams. Most of them will hover in between 100 milligrams to 150 and exceptionally 200 milligrams. In the context of hair loss, we can also combine this with oral medication, for example, minoxidil at between one to two to three milligrams per day. That can be taken as a tablet, which works best, or they can combine that with um, topicals. So you can have topical minoxidil oral spironolactone. And guys, the last thing spironolactone can be used for quite well is to treat oily skin. So that's called seborrhea. and normally happens when you have excess oil in your T-zone area. And by taking spironolactone, it can suppress oil, but it can also suppress outbreaks. So at the end of the day, this is a prescription medication. It can be used by patients of almost all ages. You can't use it if you're pregnant or lactating. And there are some side effects. The most important side effect is increase of your potassium. So for most dermatologists, once you hit above 150 milligrams, they may order some blood tests to make sure your potassium levels are in check. It's important for you to reduce the amount of potassium foods, for example, bananas and nuts. Another side effect, which is super rare, is what we call postural hypotension. In other words, as you stand out, you may feel a little bit dizzy, and that's because, remember, it's a blood pressure medication to begin with. 
Other rare side effects include menstrual changes. So spironolactam is super safe and you should consider this if you're struggling with acne. Guys, for more on acne, click here and here and I'll see you next week.